Hello, welcome to another video from networkingforums.com. I know it's been a while, so I wanted to go ahead and start up again. This time I want to make a video about our old friend Ping. That's Packet Internet Network Groper, some whatever. Anyway, Ping. We use it all the dang time to try to find out if uh, a host online is, well, online. But does it always tell that story? Let's delve into it. All right, where do I put it here? Ah, here it is. I'm a ping command. Let's ping 8.8.8.8. .8 One of uh, Google's DNS servers. Oh, I must have a space in there for it to work. You get this? This is the magic of live recording here. Okay, here we go. All right, so my ping worked out. I'm pinging 8.8.8.8. .8 and it says uh, so many byte size ping. There's how long it took to get there, the time to live. Time to live is uh, how many hops it has available there. So, it, uh, And then time is the actual amount of time that it took to get back there. So when you hear people talking about a good ping or a bad ping when they're playing a game, they're not talking about the time to live. They're talking about the actual time itself. The longer the time it takes, the slower the connection, generally speaking. Or it could be the more congested. But in this case, four sent, four received, everything's fine. All right, but what does it mean if I ping a host? And I happen to know this host is not on my network, and it's one of those uh, RFC 1918 uh, private network spaces there. It shouldn't be routed on the Internet, and up oh, there it is. Request timed out. Okay, what does that mean? Does that mean whatever server is at 10.1.1.1 is not on? Does it mean that it's available but somehow being blocked? Does it mean that it is on but it's not responding to ping? It, it could be any one of those. So sometimes a ping command can tell you absolutely, as in the case here with the 8.8.81, that thing is up, it's running, it's good. But I work with firewalls a lot and people will tell me, you know, uh, like I'll put a rule in and they'll say, well, I can't ping the server on the other end. I think the rule is bad. It's like, well, no. The rule said you're going to open port 53, let's say for DNS, not ICMP in general. See, ping works with the ICMP protocol, not TCP, not UDP, ICMP. So if I don't allow ICMP to go through my firewall, it's not going to reach that destination server. Your ping will not get there. You'll get a request timed out. Uh, I also have to allow the return traffic because the the ping is not what's called a stateful session. You see, if I go out on the internet to a web page, that's a stateful session. My browser initiates a connection on port 80 or port 443, and then the return traffic is automatically permitted because it's associated with that connection. But ping has no association, so the ping goes out, and then the device has to send its own ICMP message back, and it's not connected to that particular session. So if I was to create uh, the ability to ping a device on the other end of my firewall, I would have to have a rule that allows inbound ping and a rule that allows outbound ping. Ooh, yeah. Once I have those rules in place for the particular host in question, then the ping should be able to succeed if the host is up and if it responds to ping. So in this case, we've got a host that either is down or it doesn't respond to ping or it's behind a firewall that doesn't allow the ping traffic to go through. Now, the request timed out is different from destination host unreachable. Destination host unreachable means you're getting a message from a layer three routing device that says, no, there is no way we have to get to that IP address. You gotta think of some other plan, Jack. Maybe put in, oh, I don't know, a route. So a destination host unreachable means you need some routing, or maybe there's a duplicate IP address conflict. There's something that doesn't have anything to do with the actual host or destination. It's something in the path in between the two. That's what destination host unreachable means. But request timed out. The little packet was heading that way, but never got there. So I want to show a utility that I like to use to test connections through a firewall that doesn't rely on ICMP it sends a TCP packet and it's called TCP. Uh, how do you get it? Well, you go to a search engine. I used Google. Since I also used Google here, 
you know, they were kind enough to give me a DNS server to ping. I thought I'd be kind enough to return the favor and use their search page. Type in TC ping, as I have done, and you'd see a number of downloads. I took the one for the CNET one. Downloaded it, and it comes in a little zip file. It's a small file, uh, 62K, and it, it's fun. I just put it into my user directory. I'm going to go ahead and minimize these things here. La, la, la. And I can type in TC ping. Now, let's see if 8.8.8.8 .8 is up. And it's responding on port 53. That's the port for DNS. We wait. Aha, there it is. Open and close connection succeeded in whatever milliseconds. So now that means I was able to open the connection and then close the connection. It is communicating on port 53. Well, what if I have an application that also requires I hit that address on port, uh, let's say, 54? I don't know what port 54 is. Don't bother about it. Just let's see what happens. And let's say I've opened it up on my firewall. Port 54 traffic should be traversing. Well, it's being on port 54. Uh-oh, could not open connection to server. If I check on my firewall and I see the traffic passing through from my workstation to that server on port 54, that tells me, all right, it was allowed, but it did not reach there. And that means the server itself may not be responding. So it's a handy utility to let people know, is the server responding on that port or not? If I try to go to, what if I go to that 10.1.1.1, which I know I can't reach. And we'll go to port 53 on that too. Let's say that's one of my DNS servers. What happens there? Now we know that 8.8.8.8 is there. It does respond to port 53. It doesn't respond to 54. Here, it says unknown host. It can't even reach that. So with this TC ping utility, we're able to see is the server up? If it is up, it'll either say open the connection or could not open the connection. If the server is not up, it gives us an unknown host or destination host unreachable, something of that nature. But if it can reach that server, it will then give us a response if that port is open and it's listening on that port or not. So this is a very handy utility. And I know there's folks out there who love to say, well, just tell that to the port. Well, yeah. Telnet is fun. You can telnet and specify the port you're going to telnet on and issue commands, but that also requires, for me, double-clicking on another program. I may have already had this open, my command prompt for running ping commands, and having just be able to type in TC ping, the IP address and the port number, is a lot faster than going over to PuTTY and typing in the IP address and specifying a port and waiting and then opening it up and then typing exit manually. This this does it all for me. And I can get a screenshot of this, copy and paste it, and not have to show, here's the settings I used on PuTTY. Now here's the window I got from PuTTY that said, here's what happened. I just copy and paste this into the email to the customer and say, look, the server is not up and is not up, or the server is up and responding on that port. If you have a problem after this, it's going to be with your application, not with my network and certainly not with my firewall. But anyway, this is a fun little thing with ping, and I hope you enjoy using uh, TC ping as well to widen out your bag of tricks. If you have any more questions about networking or want to discuss in general, please feel free to come by to www.networking-forums.com where there's a lot of really great people ready to give a lot of really great advice. For networkingforums.com, I'm Dean Webb. Bye for now.